Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back to do the opposite version of the popular fragrances that I really don't like video. Um, today we're going to be talking about really popular overhyped fragrances that I really do like. So it's funny because um, I think people want to, I think people were requesting that I do a part two to the ones, the overhyped fragrances that I don't like. I'll definitely go through and try to get another part two, which I can easily do a part two. It's just a matter of me sitting down and going through a bunch of fragrances. But anyways, let's jump right in. So a super, super hyped up fragrance that I really do like is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Um, it's That fragrance was my best friend's signature for years. Um, it was, and I'm talking like early 2000s, I think it was like 2003. 2004 that she was wearing that fragrance. That original formulation of light blue was an absolute monster of a fragrance. Um, that was a perfume that she would only ever have to apply it once and it would stick around all day. Um, it was super strong. It projected like a beast and it's just a crazy fragrance. Um, I still to this day love it. I've never been able to wear the original because that it's just, it's, it, that's her fragrance. I cannot wear it. I do have some of the flankers that I really love, but I love light blue. Um, it's been done so many times. There are so many fragrances that smell like it. There are so many clones of it. Um, it's just been out there for a long time. It's super hyped up. It still is to this day, but it is one that I, to this day, still absolutely adore. I think it's beautiful. I think that for being like a mass appealing designer fragrance, it's like a masterpiece in that way. That's why it has stood the test of time and is still around and is probably still one of the best selling fragrances out there. Another really popular fragrance, this one is really controversial. A lot of people really hate this fragrance and it's not hyped up so much anymore, but it's still a really good selling fragrance, is Calvin Klein Euphoria. I love that perfume. I think it is so beautiful. Uh, it's an old signature of mine. I only wore it as a signature for maybe a year or a year and a half, probably between 2006 and 2007, or maybe between like 2006 and 2008. It was the perfume that I wore directly preceding Hypnotic Poison. The original formulation of that fragrance is also an absolute monster. It I used to only have to apply it once. It would get me through the entire day. Um, the way that I kind of got turned on to that fragrance was I worked with a girl who she wore it and every time I smelled it on her, it reminded me of the original formulation of Estee Lauder Cinnabar, like the one that my mom used to wear back in the 80s. It doesn't smell like Cinnabar, but it had that same kind of vibe and it was nostalgic smelling for me, which is why I loved it so much. So I immediately, I, I asked her, you know, what fragrance is that you're, that you're wearing? It is so beautiful. It reminds me of a fragrance my mom used to wear in the 80s. And I, she told me and I ran out and got a bottle of it and I wore it like, I think at that point I wasn't wearing anything exclusively. So I say signature loosely because I probably had I don't know, six other fragrances that I rotated it with. But anyways, I still to this day love Euphoria. The reformulation is sad because it just is, it doesn't perform well anymore, but I still love the way it smells. I think it's beautiful. Another really, really popular and very hyped up fragrance that I absolutely adore is Prada Candy. Um, I will say Prada Candy, I don't know, I think people think it's been through a reformulation. I don't think it has because I remember when it came out back in, what year did it come out? Maybe 2009, 2010. Um, it didn't last on me back then. It's really never been a good performing fragrance for me, but I love the way it smells. It was the first kind of like really caramel dominant fragrance on the market and, or that I can remember. I can't think of anything that came before Prada Candy that was really like caramel dominant the way that it was. I love the way it smells. I think it's amazing. I've still got a bottle in my collection. I love it. It's sweet. It's perfect. And it's still a really good seller. And all the, it's another one that has kind of stood the test of time. It's been out for a good long while now and people still love it. And I definitely still love it. I also love a lot of its flankers. Prada Candy by Night, uh, Candy, is it the Candy Gloss? Prada Candy Gloss. 
Um, yeah, I think every single flanker I've smelled so far, I've I've enjoyed. Okay, another one that is super popular, crazy overhyped, has been cloned a million times, so many fragrances out there smell like it, is Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy. Um, I love that fragrance. It's another one that it's just, I don't know, it's just fun. It's sweet, it's beautiful. Um, I love all of the flankers of it. Juicy Couture by Night, Juicy Couture Gold, um, so many of them. Just, they all smell amazing and I just love it. I love the DNA of Viva La Juicy. And I know it's been done like no other. I think Justin Bieber made a fragrance that smelled like it. Um, there are so many other fragrances out there that smell like Viva La Juicy. The Lotus Pear one that I just ordered from The Seven Virtues, it smelled exactly like Viva La Juicy. So it's been done and done again, but for some reason, I still love it. Another really old and super hyped up fragrance that I adore is Aqualina Pink Sugar. That one is super controversial. You either really love it or you really hate it. A lot of people are on both sides of the fence. A lot of people really love it. A lot of people really hate it. Um, it's that burnt sugar or that burnt caramel note in it that is the thing that people don't like about it. That's what I love about it. I love. It's like a, it's a kitchen sink kind of fragrance. It's got so many notes in it, like tons of notes. But I love the sweetness of it. I love the candied aspect to it. I love the caramel and the licorice sweet gourmand aspect of it. I just adore it. I've been wearing it since the early 2000s. I've always had a bottle of it in my collection and I probably always will. Um, I just adore it. Okay, another super hyped up fragrance that I absolutely love is Ariana Grande Cloud. And even though I'm kind of over the whole Baccarat Rouge 540 um, scent profile, there's something about Cloud and Cloud Intense that I still adore. And, and I think it's because it's a little bit sweeter than Baccarat Rouge 540. Um, it's more like Baccarat Rouge 540 x Straight, which I, that's the, ver if I had to choose a version, that would be the version I would choose. I think the x Straight is really, really beautiful because it's sweeter. Somebody sent me a bottle of a dupe of the x Straight version and it is incredible like it's so good but yeah i love ariana grande cloud um i will always love cloud it's the only fragrance that smells that has that scent profile that i can still tolerate okay a, a fragrance that it's not necessarily super hyped up in fact i don't know if i've ever heard anybody talk about it but it's one that has been around for literal decades at this point that i really want to add to my collection is jessica mcclintock just the original jessica mcclintock that looks like a wedding bottle or something it's beautiful it's like a square bottle with beautiful white writing it's got this decorative white kind of lacy looking lid and if I remember correctly, it's a Lily of the Valley fragrance. And I have been wanting that fragrance back in my life for so long. I, it's one that I wore when I was a kid. Um, I don't know why I don't have a bottle of it because I need to for my vintage collection. I don't necessarily need a vintage bottle. I just want the new, you know, whatever the newest formulation is. I know it won't be anything near what it used to be, but I just want that nostalgia back in my life. But that's another fragrance that has been around for literally, like literally forever, and it is still holding on strong. Okay, another really popular hyped up fragrance, and again, it's not super hyped, but it's talked about all the time, even still, that I adore is Britney Spears' Fantasy. I pretty much love the entire Fantasy line. Um, I like the, ori the original Fantasy formulation more than the, the reformulated version. Honestly though, I love both versions. Um, I have the Britney Spears Fantasy Stage Edition, which is the original formulation. It's got more of that kind of white chocolate cupcake icing, whatever that note is, and less kiwi. And I have a pen spray of the new formulation, which is much more fruity. It's much more kiwi forward, but I love them both. Um, I wore the original formulation of Fantasy for, I don't know, maybe six months or so right after it came out. But yeah, I still love it to this day. I still wear it. I still have it in my collection and probably always will because there's something so classic about it, especially when it comes to celebrity fragrances. It is such a classic celebrity fragrance. Okay, another fragrance that 
has seriously been hyped to the moon and back is Mugler Alien. I love Alien. It is to me at this point it is like such a cult classic favorite fragrance so many people it's very polarizing though people either really really love it or really really hate it I feel like more people love it than hate it but there's definitely a lot of people that don't enjoy it um, it is incredibly strong that fragrance is nuclear you put it on like you can put on one spray and it will get you through the entire day. That's a fragrance that I never overspray with it. I put on one spray. In fact, it's one of those that I spray in front of me and walk into because it is so nuclear. But I love it and all the flankers I love. I think, yeah, I don't know that I've ever smelled a flanker I didn't like. Um, I've got a whole bunch of flankers I've had in the past even more than I do now. Um, but there is just such a classic, incredibly hyped up fragrance, but in my opinion, for good reason. I just think it's beautiful. Another one that is very, very polarizing, and in fact, I think it, this one's a little bit more polarizing even than Alien, is Chloe. The original, just not the original, it's the new, new, but just the Chloe EDP. People either really, really love it or really, really hate it. I just happen to absolutely adore it. I just think it is the most beautiful, perfect, like fresh, classy rose. Every time I wear that perfume, it makes me think of like the most put together, like classy but minimal French woman. I don't know, like it just, it's just so, I just feel like it's such a refined fragrance and some people absolutely detest it, hate it, and I totally understand. I can see that. Um, I feel like if it's one of those fragrances that doesn't really mesh with your skin chemistry, it's, it's just gonna be a mess. And thankfully it's really, really nice on me, but yeah, it's been super hyped, but I love it. That goes for all Chloe fragrances. Um, I haven't met a Chloe fragrance yet that I have not liked. Um, I just love the house in general. Another fragrance that I really, really like that has, it's kind of, it's very popular and a little bit generic smelling, but I really enjoy it, is Marc Jacobs Daisy. Um, I don't have a bottle of it in my collection, but I really do like it. And if I ever come across a bottle for a really good price, I will definitely add it to my collection. Um, it is really pretty generic smelling, and I feel like it's like all of the other ones on this list, that it's just been, it's been cloned a ton. There are so many fragrances out there that have been made to smell like Daisy because it's such an easy, breezy, like mass appealing fragrance. But for all of those reasons, I really love it. Um, I just think it's an easy, breezy, mass appealing fragrance. Yeah, I just think it's really, really pretty. It's not one that I've ever talked about on this channel, but I do really enjoy it. Another Marc Jacobs fragrance that is, that has in the past been really hyped up, not so much anymore, um, but it is still a very popular fragrance, is Marc Jacobs Decadence. That's another very, very polarizing fragrance. You either really love it or you really hate it. You either think it smells like pickles or you think it smells like plum and sweet, cozy spices which thankfully is what I get from it. There's something about that fragrance and it's so funny because there's somebody else out there that this it, it's nostalgic for them too for this same reason. There's something about it that reminds me of some kind of potpourri that my mom used to put around the house in the 80s. She would put it out at Christmas time and it smelled like Marc Jacobs decadence. So there's also this kind of nostalgic thing for me. There's somebody else out there too that they've got the same scent memory associated with it, which is amazing. But yeah, some people it just doesn't work on them and they somehow get pickles from it or like pickle juice. And if I got pickles or pickle juice from it, I would not like it either. So I totally understand. But I happen to adore that fragrance. In fact, that's one of those fragrances that I'll just start craving. Even in like the dead of the summer in the heat, I will start craving decadence and I'll have to pull it out and wear it because I love it so, so much. Another really, really hyped up fragrance that I really, really love is YSL Black Opium. Don't get me wrong, I love Black Opium, but I don't think that it deserves the like massive amount of hype around it. That is a fragrance that is another one like Alien that has just been hyped to the moon and back. At one point, everybody was talking about Black Opium. Now, don't get me wrong, I adore it, but I don't think that it deserves that kind of hype. 
it's really yummy and sweet and pleasant with a little bit of coffee, really pretty flowers. It's like a syrupy sweet fragrance. It's another one that has been cloned a million times. There's so many fragrances out there that smell like it, but it's popular for good reason because it just smells good. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't perform well, but usually when I wear it, I just will wear it. I've got the original formulation. I've also got the extreme or intense one, which really is just like a stronger version of it. I love them both though. I don't know. That's another one where I don't know that I've smelled a flanker of black opium that I have disliked. Um, I've heard the new neon one smells amazing. I really want to get my nose on it. I think it's super, super overhyped, but it's one that I really do enjoy. Another fragrance that has been incredibly hyped up, like, and still is really, it's just the hype has died down a little bit because it's not like the newest thing anymore. I think this one absolutely deserves the hype is YSL Libre, especially intense but I adore, I adore the entire line. I feel like YSL Libre is the best designer perfume that has been released in the past maybe eight years or so. Um, I just adore it. I think it is a stunning fragrance. I feel like it deserves all the hype that it has gotten and it is a very hyped up, very popular fragrance that I adore. Another line, this whole line of fragrances has kind of always been really hyped up, but, and some of them deserve the hype, some of them don't, but I really en enjoy the entire line is the Miss Dior line. Um, so all the way from Miss Dior Cherie, the original, all the way to, I haven't smelled the newest formulation yet. So many people are really, really disappointed by the newest formulation, but I've been told that like if you smell it and go into it without a lot of expectation, then you'll end up enjoying it because it really is a very pleasant, fragrance, but everybody says it's very, very generic. But in general, I just like the entire line. Um, I think that every version and every formulation that has come out has been really, really pleasant, very like mass appealing, easy to wear, um, just beautiful fragrances. I love the entire line and yeah, I would love to have the entire line if I could track them all down. Um, but yeah, those, they have been like one of the most popular fragrance lines for the past two decades, really. Another really, really popular fragrance that it's got like a million flankers at this point is Gucci Bloom. I love Gucci Bloom. I never talk about it on this channel because I don't have it or any of its flankers, but I really do love it. Um, I feel like it's super popular and is talked about. It's just not like super hyped up like maybe Alien was. I do really love it. I think it's beautiful. And in the same kind of vein is Gucci Flora. I love Gucci Flora, especially the EDP formulation, which unfortunately has been discontinued. Thankfully, I was able to snag a bottle secondhand <laughs> as soon as I found out, because I've got a pen spray of it that I love, but as soon as I found out that it had been discontinued, I like went on the hunt and thank goodness I found a bottle. But yeah, those are both fragrances that I feel like have had their time of being really hyped up. Gucci Bloom has what, like six, six flankers at this point, maybe even more. So it's incredibly popular, but for good reason. Um, neither of them really perform very well, but I still love them regardless. I think they're really beautiful. Another really, really popular fragrance that I have always loved ever since it was released. It's not talked about much anymore. Um, people do still talk about it here and there, but as a whole, the fragrance community isn't talking about it a ton, but it is still an incredibly popular fragrance. It still sells like crazy, and I adore it. DKNY Be Delicious. Um, it is so nostalgic for me. That takes me straight back to the early 2000s. I love the way it smells. I think it's really, really unique for what it is. And it's another one, it's got a ton of flankers. I love the original and I love Golden Delicious. They are my two favorites. I just think they're such good perfumes. Um, there's something about Be Delicious that is so, I don't know, it's just so nostalgic and so yummy. It's just such a good apple fragrance and a totally different kind of take on apple too. Um, it's not like a literal apple, but you definitely know it's apple. 
I don't know, there's something about it that I, I just adore. Another super hyped up fragrance, it, this had its day. I went through a bottle of this myself at one point back in, I don't know, the early 2000s. Probably the year it came out is the year I bought it and went through a bottle of it. Um, it's an oldie but a goodie. I love love from Moschino. Um, it's kind of a smell-alike of Dolce & Gabbana light blue, but there's something about it that's heavier. It's got more of like an orange, if I remember correctly, it's got more of like an orange um, scent to it, and it's heavier than, uh, than Dolce & Gabbana light blue. I love that fragrance. That's another one I need to get back in my life, but I have a feeling it's been reformulated, and I have a feeling I'm gonna be very disappointed when I smell what what's available now but i do absolutely love that fragrance that one's not super hyped up anymore but it's still really popular people still are talking about it all these years later another just super like classic it's just completely woven into the fabric of perfume at this point is aqua de joya from armani i just think it's such a a beautiful fragrance. I have a flanker of it called Essenza. I love, it's my favorite. It's my favorite formulation of the perfume, but I think they're, that they're all really pretty. Now I haven't smelled the new ones like Sky and um, maybe there's one called Sun or Sun something. There's like a whole line of them now that I haven't smelled, but as far as the original goes, I just think it's beautiful. I think it's a super classic, really, really nice perfume. Another super, super hyped up perfume that I adore, it's an old signature of mine, is Hypnotic Poison from Dior. That goes for all of Dior's fragrances. I feel like they have all been super, super hyped up. Um, Dior Addict, Dior Hypnotic Poison, Pure Poison, um, J'adore, all of them. They've all had their time and they're all, even still, people talk about all of them. Um, there are still clones being made of all of them, and I just think that they've all been hyped up at one point or another, and I love them all. Dior is probably my favorite designer house, if you don't count Guerlain as a designer, which some people do. Some people say that Guerlain is designer, some people say it's niche. Um, I would say Guerlain's my favorite house if we're saying designers, but if it's not, if we're saying it's not a designer, then I would say Christian Dior because I rarely come across a Christian Dior fragrance that I don't enjoy. That's another fragrance that I absolutely love, speaking of Guerlain, that has been incredibly hyped up for years at this point is Guerlain Mon Guerlain. It is such a beautiful fragrance. It has been hyped up a ton. It's got a ton of flankers at this point, but it is such a beautiful, fragrance. The sweet, powdery, lavender, and vanilla combination in all of them is just so beautiful. I love it. I've got I, I've got Mon Guerlain and like three different flankers of it, and I adore them all. Another newer one that I absolutely love and has been so, I mean like so hyped up, is Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle and La Belle Intense. Both of them, oh my gosh, I adore them. They are amazing. Those are very polarizing fragrances too, which I feel like Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances in general are polarizing. You either really love them or really don't like them. Um, I happen to really, really love La Belle. The Scandal line doesn't work for me, but the La Belle line is so good. I adore it. They've been hyped up like crazy. Um, but I feel like for good reason. They're just so good. That combination of pear and vanilla is so good. And they perform so well. They're absolute beast fragrances. Another super hyped up fragrance that I really like it. It's not my favorite fragrance in the world, but I do like it, is Mancera Roses Vini. I feel like that fragrance has been way, way hyped up over the years. Um, at this point, it's got a ton of clones and smell-alikes and for good reason. It's a really, really beautiful fragrance. Um, I keep samples of the real thing, but I don't have a bottle of the real thing because I do have um, Zara Rose Gourmand, like the original formulation that they came out with, and it smells and performs 
exactly like Mansara Roses for me. Um, and yeah, I do really enjoy it. Another fragrance that, and I'm gonna end it with this one because again, I could, just like the, with the ones I don't like, I could sit here and go on for hours about hyped up fragrances that I do like, but this one isn't, well, it's coming back into vision in the community at this point because of the new flanker that just released, but Elisop Girl of Now, that fragrance got so, so hyped up. I wanna say like maybe four years ago or so, it just, it was so super hyped up, um, but I love it. It's a beauty, it, like I feel like the hype is real on that one and for good reason, it's beautiful. There are so many Elisab fragrances that have been super hyped up that I feel like are, like the hype is warranted. Um, but Girl of Now is gorgeous. It's pistachio and orange blossom and honey. It's sweet, you can wear it any time of year. It's just like a perfect fragrance. Um, yeah, and I have, I really, really want to get my nose on the new flanker that just came out. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it here because again, I could go on and on. Let me know if you guys want a part two of this one. Um, after I do a part two of the one the, of the ones that I don't like, um, I'd be happy to do that. But I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.